Editing points don't have to be scary. They are there to help you fix issues within a design. You just have to know how to use them. We're going to start off super slow here and I'm going to try to cover all of the points in just this one video. So stick around because this really is one of the most powerful editing tools in Silhouette Studio. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette you found your way to Silhouette Success. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the point editing panel so that you can use the software to its full potential. Now, if everyone is ready to learn something new, let's do this. You can pull up the point editing panel by double clicking on an element. Your options under selected points are delete point, break path, corner, or smooth. Then under selected lines, you have make flat, make curve, and simplify. You can also find convert to path here. The section under that shows how many shapes are selected, the number of contours, your node count, and then the number of linear nodes and bezier nodes. Linear nodes are straight and bezier are curved. Now let's take a look at a simple straight line. When I double click on the line, two red dots appear, one on each end. The red dots indicate a broken path, meaning that this is not an enclosed shape. The points do not connect in any way. When I select a point, smooth becomes highlighted in the point editing panel. At this point, this is a flat line. There is no curve to it. We can select make curve and a blue square appears. Now you can grab that and pull and adjust the shape of the line. Click on the other end point and you'll see that you can adjust that one as well. You can also add an editing point by clicking anywhere on the design to further adjust the shape and curve. You can now use this to curve text in your design. Let's move on to an actual shape now. This square is a closed path, so the nodes show up as gray squares. Select a node, and you can see here that it is set to corner. We can pull it around to adjust the shape. We can click to add another node and more sides to our polygon. Now let's select make curve. One side of the polygon becomes rounded and we can use the blue point to manipulate the curve. If we set the point to smooth, then select make curve, the lines on both sides of the point become curved and there are two squares that we can use to adjust the shape of our design element. We can do this with all four of the points, and with a little bit of adjusting, we get a circle. Well, almost anyway. Let's duplicate this now. Select both and make a compound path. We're going to connect these two shapes by breaking the path. Select a node, then break path. The node will turn red, and there are actually two dots there. Pull one away to separate, then move over to the other element and repeat that process. Notice that the fill color is gone now because these are no longer enclosed shapes. We can fix that by selecting a red dot and pulling it over to another red dot. When they are close enough to one another, they'll snap together and fix that part of the broken path. We now have one gray node instead of two red nodes. As soon as we connect the second broken path, this becomes an enclosed shape again, and it is filled with color. I'm not sure what you would call this shape, but it is enclosed nonetheless. Now, let's look at tracing a design. We'll use a simple circle. When we double click on the original, 
we can see that this shape has four nodes and that will result in a fast, smooth cut. Double click on the traced file and it has a lot more nodes. We can use the simplify button to reduce that number greatly, but a trace will never be as good as the original. Let's head over to the Cameo 5 for just a minute here. I'm going to send two different circles through. The first one that's going to cut will be a circle that was drawn from the drawing tools. The second circle will be a trace of the first circle without simplifying the editing points. You can see that the first circle cut out nice and smooth, whereas the second circle was very jerky. Every node sends a different piece of information to the machine and it has to stop and turn slightly at each and every node. Therefore, it takes longer and the cut is not as smooth. You don't really notice the jagged edges too much on the vinyl here, but it would make a bigger difference if you had cut these out of cardstock. So it's important to remember whenever you trace anything in the software, you want to simplify your editing points before you cut it out. Now we can also use editing points to crop images. Let's say I want to use this PNG, but I want to cut the bottom of it off. I can pull up the editing points by double clicking and choose both of the bottom points by holding down the shift key while clicking on each one. I'll then use the up arrow key on my keyboard and that's going to ensure that they stay even and my image is going to retain its shape. And we're going to go back to our curved text now. Let's bring that onto the mat. Right click and make a compound path. You can only pull up points on one element at a time, so you have to make it a compound path first. Because the L and the H were overlapping, there's now a hole in our letters. We can use editing points to get rid of that. Double click, zoom in to see where the problem is, select the point or points that are causing issues and delete them. Even though this is probably not the most efficient method, I can select all of the points and fix the spacing on the L as well. Modify the other points and you're good to go. Now that you have all of this information, it's up to you to set aside some time to play around with the point editing panel. Put the effort into learning this new skill and you can thank me later. This video here shows a little bit more about using editing points. Be sure to catch that one if you haven't yet. Go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.